listen, they're going to be buying houses at some point, number one. But number two, their parents, their parents, you know, talk to their parents. Say, hey, what's your mom and dad's number? Call, call them. Say, hey, I'm, I'm a friend of your son or whatever. You know, I just got in real estate. I just want to know if there's anything I can do to help you. First time I heard about you was with, uh, I think it was Brandon Mulrennan. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, I bought his system and, yeah. and just the wrong time, right? Because there's not a whole, whole lot of uh, for sale by owner out there. I didn't like the idea of paying uh, for for stuff. <laughs> uh, what I, do you I was, mean, paying for the coaching? Pay, paying for the for for the coaching. Yeah. Um, and uh, and 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 more or less paying for leads. Like I don't like that either because if people see you for who you are, they're going to use you. Yeah. Right. Um, and so with that, I was looking for systems that that you that you personally implemented. And I haven't, and I haven't quite seen that. And, and you almost touched on that a little bit. You said that, yeah. that uh, when you make your, your first call, um, you know, you make your first call, you make your initial, um, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm Ricky Caruth. Um, you know, the, how, how's the weather going? You're just trying to strike up that, that conversation, yeah. right? And um, uh, past that, once you get past that first, yeah. first call, um, what is your follow-up system, follow-up system like beyond just how can I be a value today? How can I be a value tomorrow? How can I be a value when you're ready? Yeah. Because it, it really does sound like instead of, you know, talk about the pressure cooker a little bit, instead of being on the outside waiting for, for them to cook, it sounds like you're kind of jumping into the pressure cooker with them mm -hmm. and, and, you know, letting your relationship uh, be built together, so to speak. I don't know. So I mean, is that what you do? Like, I, I guess what you're asking is once I, yeah, yeah be, beyond the email. Yeah. Once I talk to them and then once they're in my email database and they're getting my weekly email, then what basically, right? Yeah. They call you. That's number one. Like that's the first thing to wrap your head around. Sure. Let me get into some other stuff. But first and foremost, realize that we're creating a business of attraction. Our end goal is in five years, we don't have to call anyone. People are calling us. I haven't done anything to sell 100 properties for the last three years except for answer the phone or email if somebody, that somebody has been referred to me or a past client or somebody that's getting my emails. Like a guy called me yesterday. I sold his condo four years ago. I'll tell you a couple stories. Four years ago, I sold his condo. I haven't talked to him since. He calls me yesterday and says, we sold some land. We want to do a 1031 and buy another condo. And then I called him and after I got off the plane and we had a long conversation and he's coming down August 14th to look at some stuff in 800 range. I haven't talked to him since then. When you're in the deal with them and they see, the, they see how above and beyond you go during the deal to make sure everything goes smooth for them, they'll never use another agent. You don't have to do all this extra, you know, bells and whistles stuff, number one. Okay, when they feel that value, they're not going anywhere else. They're like, I will never use another aid. That guy did it, right? But going back to when I first started talking, the progression. When you're at the point where you can call people in your database twice a year, do it. But then as, as, as you continue to grow, you're gonna to get to the point where you can't call them. Because when you call past clients and people in your database, that's not, a, a, a cold call on average is three minutes, something like that. A past client call is 30 minutes. You can't, it's a totally different ball game. You can't do $100 an hour past clients. Number one, they're all good numbers. Number two, they all wanna talk forever. You don't, you don't realize how valuable each dial is. Each dial that you're dialing, that's like when you're making calls and some people didn't answer, and then some people are like, they wanna go back through the list to call the people that didn't answer. No, they're habitual non-answers. They're like the unsubscribers, right? They're part of the same family, family tree. They're not gonna answer. And so why am I gonna waste that dial? Because that dial is so valuable to me, I could be dialing a new number that might actually answer. It's like so important, right? You guys don't realize the ripple effects here. You know, I'll tell you something else too, how important everyday daily activities are. If you, like, if your dreams are, you know, five years out, 
all right, and, and, you're, and you're like, I'm gonna make my calls and I'm gonna do my thing. If you miss a session, you're literally sticking your dreams out another six months, just off one day of not doing what you're supposed to do because of the snowball and ripple effect that that one day is gonna have five years from now, the relationships and people you talk to. Is there a certain program you use? Hey buddy. Uh, or a company for your weekly email? And then what content are you putting on that email? Guys, write this one down. Zero to diamond.com backslash weekly email. There's a tutorial, screen share. I build the email, walk you through the whole process. Constant contacts is who I use. If you start right there with your free trial, they will give you my template. They'll create, they'll actually custom make a template just like mine for you. And then you can just take that and plug your stuff in there. So just kind of going along with his, um, I signed up with uh, Constant Contacts for a bit, and I'm not a tech yeah. guy at all. Yeah. Um, worst, worst, I know you say you're not a tech guy, but I'm really not a tech guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much time I wasted trying to put together like yeah. emails, and it just didn't work yeah. for me. Um, I would much rather pay somebody yeah. out of the sales I've already done yeah. to put together something. Right. How viable that would that be, do you think? Listen, man, here's the thing. That email is an extension of who you are. It's got to come out of your mind because mm. it's giving your clients a part of you. They know it's a bulk email, but they feel a little bit of Ricky in there because right. I'm giving my opinions on stuff. So listen, man, here's the thing. If you're not very tech savvy and stuff, do this. Be the new listing guy, right? Where every week, what's your name? Jeremy. Jeremy? Yeah. You just say, you know, Jeremy's new listings of the week, right? Or, or, or Jeremy's new listing report. That could be the subject every week with the date of whatever that Wednesday is. And, and, and you, your, your email could just say, you know, hope, you got, hope you're having a great week. I wanted to let you know, here's the new listings in the area. Boom, click here. It goes back a week or two. It's all the new listings. Say, so listen, if you see something you like, let me know. Everything's going good for me. We'll talk to you soon. Gotcha. It could, that could literally come off of like a Gmail or, you, or Yahoo. I mean, uh, it, you don't even have to do. Constant I mean, you, you might as well do it because it, it's, you know, and as you grow your database, you, you know, the thing about Constant Contacts compared to like Gmail and Yahoo and all that stuff is that they only let you do so many recipients per email and then so many of those emails per hour. Right. So it gets to a point where you can't scale. But with Constant Contacts and some of these other platforms, you put everybody in there and you make the email and click send, boom, it sends everybody at once. It's a personal preference. Listen, everything that I tell you guys is just what I think. It is not to be taken with, this is what we need to do. I want you to guys to take, I want you guys to listen to me and then say, okay, I can take what he did and I can apply this to my business and that I see the light, right? And if maybe you can take my approach of just trying to help people with your door knocking. I don't know what kind of scripts or what your approach is, but if you can take a more low, low, approach, low pressure approach, more of a friendship creator, data collector type, uh, you know, type strategy, then maybe that helps you. I don't know what you're into, but um, no, man, I love door knocking. I've never done it, right? Never done it, but I know a lot of people that have, a lot of people are very successful. Whatever you have to do to build your database, right? And if that's what you like, I'm all about it. Like, it. like if I were starting all over again, I believe I would have my, my email would be my foundation, right? I would want to do something like a monthly bulk text and I want to build that text database. I mean, I want to get numbers from my prospects and I want to build that database as well. And I would do social media as well. But to answer your question, listen, they're going to be buying houses at some point, number one, but number two, their parents. Their parents, you know? Talk to their parents. Say, hey, what's your mom and dad's number? Call, call them. Say, hey, I'm, I'm a friend of your son or whatever. You know, I just got in real estate. I just wanna know if there's anything I can do to help you, right? Use those connections to work up. Get their data, put them in your database. Build, 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 right? I don't know. I, I started when I was 19, I'm 20 now, so I'm kind of a younger guy. Give him a hand. Same thing. Dude, he's 20 years old. Kind of the same thing, like my sphere, of, my sphere of influence are younger people my age and stuff, and like I, I'm trying to connect to older people. Yeah. Uh, just people my parents' age and stuff like that, and I, I just want to ask you, like what is one thing you think that I could do that could provide value to older people for them to not see me as, you know, 
a younger guy, like, hey, this guy's been in the business for a year. Like, I'd rather use someone who's been in the business for 15 years mm -hmm. or something mm -hmm. like that. Because I feel like, you know, I've been doing it for a year. Yeah. I'm, I'm confident in myself and my abilities, yeah. but I just want. Have you made able. sales? Yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. Whenever, number one, talk to them. Mm -hmm. That's first and foremost, because if you're not talking to them, then no, nothing's going to happen. Number one. Number two, have the conversation with them and say, listen, tell me why exactly you would want to work with someone who's 15 years in the business and probably too busy to really give you the attention you really need. Why wouldn't you want to work with someone like myself who has a little experience here that knows I know the game, right? And I have time to spend just about every waking hour on just your deal. There's no other agent. If you want Mr. 100 deals a year, Ricky, down the road, you go down there, look at him right in his eye and ask him where his, your deal is going to be on his priority list. I can guarantee you it's not going to be at the top because that's where you're going to be for me at the top. And I'm going to spend eight hours a day on just your deal, right? So you have time. The experienced agents don't have the time you have. That's a huge advantage. And you need to play to that advantage. You need to tell your prospects that you have that on your side, right? As, as an up and coming agent, as someone who's trying to make it in the business, you've got that to go out there and really, really take care of them. I don't care how to cook shrimp etouffee. I don't care what color to paint my walls in the fall or 10 buyer tips for, to win multiple offers and stuff. I don't care about national stats. Nobody cares about that. They want to know local information, right? So when you go to your, your, your when you're door knocking, so you're a door knocker? Yeah, you're just gonna say, listen, and, and, and two, I want you to watch this video. You can write this down. It's called Best Door Knocking Script for Real Estate Agents. It's like a six minute video. And there's a guy named Ben Steven in Michigan who basically took my circle prospecting script and he kind of formatted it for door knocking and he even breaks down the body language, right? It's not, just, it's not just the words, he breaks down the body language. Go watch that video. That'll answer all your questions. You're gonna say, hey, this is Joe with whatever real estate, right? How you doing today? And you're gonna say, hey, my husband is Dale. Dale, right? With whatever appliance. That's how you're gonna start the whole thing out, right there. Hey, hey, so-and-so, hey, it's Joe at whatever real estate. How you doing today? Cool. Dale is my husband over at whatever appliance. Boom, instant credibility. You're done in the bag. Now, you're gonna just have the conversation and say, listen, I just wanna call and just see if there's anything I can do to help you in the real estate world. I know Dale helps you on the appliance stuff and I wanna be here to help you if you ever wanna buy or sell anything. So, is there anything I can do to help you now? If not, cool. I wanna do business with you later. I have your email here in Dale's database. Is it still da 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 da? Cool, I'm gonna stay in touch with you there right? And you just let me know if you need anything. Listen, if, if you go through six months though and you don't call them because you were so busy, you know, don't beat yourself up. They're still getting the weekly email. They're going to call you when they get ready. You know what I mean? And then my next question is, so when you hold an open house for another agent, you have a list of buyers that are already represented. What are you doing with that information? Are you putting them into your weekly email or are you just not contacting them or I mean considering they're already represented well you know I mean what's the definition of already represented sometimes you know what I mean um, that's the first question but definitely going in my weekly email everybody's going in that even their agents who's your agent let me put them in there too okay <laughs> right I'm put you and put them that way everybody knows what um, it just depends on what the definition of already represented is you know what I mean like if they sign something then I guess that's off limits, maybe. But, you know, um, it, it doesn't hurt to call and say, hey, I met you at the thing. I know you said you're represented. I just want to make sure that is true and that you are taken care of. You know, you can always take that approach.